Hey guys, it's Chris and more Amiga stuff. Uh, we took apart the 2000. We had it running yesterday with the new GoTech, and now today we're going to tackle just cleaning up the power supply. Never been in here. Um, so I took the cover off. I took it out of the unit, which is down there, and it's going to be crusty because it's 30 years of crap. Inside the cover's clean, but whoa! Yeah, that is definitely. We're going to vacuum this out, air blow it with some high pressure air from my garage air compressor. Uh, looks like double checking the fuse, which is functional. Just make sure no caps are leaking. And what I'm going to do is this. Since I'm going with the GoTech drive and a floppy drive of DF0, for the DF1 position, I'm going to need an additional 12 volt micro pin because if this is DF0, and then I'll need DF1 and my compact flash adapter here also takes one too. So I have an old uh, 478 Pentium that no longer works. The motherboard is dead. The power supply is on its last leg. It's proprietary compact, which is no longer made since HP took them over. Anyway, it's got good parts. So it donated a leg, and I am going to remove board, remove this, and solder these in with the solder station to the board rails. Therefore, I don't want to cut into this and have something, you know, I just don't want to cut this wiring harness. It's original. I don't want to mess with it. I mean, I can, I'm totally capable of it, but I'm just going to break some zip ties and make this look, even though the colors don't match, as you can see on the rail, when I'm looking at the top of the rail here on the Amiga, it's an orange, a blue, a blue, and a yellow, while on the same PC side, yellow, black, black, red. So I just have to make sure my yellow will be my red and my orange will be my Oops, I'm sorry. My orange will be my yellow. It's just a little bit different. Plus, I'm giving myself one extra Molex. It was the longer of the legs. Figure when it's down in here, I'll have something I could run a splitter off of if I need to. And then this will make it to the front of the power supply. Well, way up. It's actually right here to the position I need it to be in. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to snap my fingers. Boom. So it's been blown out, all the components are clean, coils look good, these are just signal filters. Caps are actually in very good shape, I don't have any leaks, I don't have any bulging, everything looks clean. So now we're going to remove this with the screws off the circuit board so we can get to the bottom of it and I can solder on these headers or actually just have some room to get to the pinouts. So let me get this disassembled. So here we are with the unit uh, removed. It's three screws, one here, one here, and one there. So I'm gonna try my best to solder into those same spots, but they look like they're one-off only. There is not any room to add anything in dang it so maybe I'll splice in here you know here they are right here these are the thin wires and they go orange right here the yellow in the middle and the blues somewhere in between that cap okay the wire packs are removed I just it uncouples it's got like that grab the cable thing you just stick a screwdriver it is still semi soft so here is my four wires I need to tap into for the 12 volt rail and I am not going to be able to get in there without removing a lot so I'm going to tie into it on the inside of the power supply before it goes out so we're back I'm trying to zoom this in so you can see what I'm doing um, I got the solder station turned on and because I tend to be kind of klutzy when it comes to doing anything and I ended up I end up 
doing it twice. Um, I did not choose to use the, uh, the four pin Molex. I just cut off the, I can't see that with my arm in the way. I just chose to cut off the tail and matching up that my yellow is the orange just from grabbing an Amiga connector holding the pin the same way with the notch orange is yellow so I've snipped the yellow here off of the board itself um, I have the other half here I'm going to twist these together and then I'm going to tin them both sides solder them together heat shrink and wrap the heat shrink so I have my heat shrink tubing I always like to go more than absolutely necessary some people were really chintzy with their heat shrink tubing and I don't like to be so I'm gonna slide this way up the line here and uh, I know this is crazy but I'm just gonna hold this with the holder here I have like a magnifying glass thing and all that jazz can you see that this end right here I have a magnet I keep here too um, so I'm going to make sure I have some now tip cleaner what am I on 300 degrees Celsius be more than enough for some silver bead solder So there we go, I have added in another 4 pinner to the original 4, this one is a little short. So what we're going to do now is in high speed, put everything back together. get this buttoned up and back inside and see if it works so look forward for that in the next video we're getting there guys thanks for watching